All right, today we're gonna to talk about boosters, or we call them pistons. There's a lot of other cute names out there that other companies have called these in the past. Here is what a piston is. If you buy a piston from our web store or from your dealer, this is what you get. You're gonna take your spring that came with your silencer, slide it over the back like that, and you're gonna take your retainer and slide it over the back like that. From there, it just drops in and you thread it down. You don't even need tools to do this at least on most silencers. Just tighten it down with your fingers and your silencer is ready to go. To understand why we need a piston, first we need to understand how an actual tilting barrel action or any sort of delay with a moving barrel, how that actually works and why. So when you fire, you obviously have an explosion that's going on inside the cartridge itself, which is gonna find the, least, the path of least resistance for that you know, super hot pressure to go. So what's gonna happen is your bullet's gonna leave and head that way, and your casing is going to want to head backwards. It's gonna to wanna to separate right there. Because the bullet only weighs 115, 124, 147 grains, in the case of nine millimeter, or whatever caliber, that's gonna be a lot more keen to go down the barrel and out the muzzle. The casing, on the other hand, is pushing back against the slide, and the slide weighs .15 ounces. I had that memorized. So, bullet tries to go out the front, casing tries to go backwards, but it's not just pushing a bullet, it's pushing the entire weight of the slide, which the slide's gonna shift back a tiny, tiny amount until it hits the locking block, and then the slide and the barrel are both trying to be moved by that casing pushing backwards, which is clearly gonna be a lot harder to push than that little bullet down the barrel. That's the delay range. Just that slight bit of delay is gonna let that bullet leave before it hits this little locking block here. You can see that little slanted part. So your barrel is gonna come back with the slide, hit that, separate, and now your breech is exposed. So that little bit of movement is pretty vital to why we need that piston assembly. Next, we're gonna show you how fast a slide is actually moving on, the, on a Glock 19, and then we'll shoot it suppressed. Maybe we'll direct thread it without a booster, and we're gonna look at that data and see what that tells us. This is our high-speed video camera. Uh, this allows us to look at things in super slow motion. It's really helpful when it comes to looking at mechanisms, the order of things happening when a mechanism is doing what it's supposed to. Fire. All right, so here's our high-speed video of just a Glock fired unsuppressed. What, is that 147 grain? Okay, 147 grain bullet, subsonic. And as you can see, there's our bullet leaving the barrel. And like we talked about, you can see the barrel and the slide remain a unitized assembly all the way until that bullet leaves. So once that bullet's left, there come some gases behind it. And right about there, you can see the barrel block start dropping because it's hitting that delay mechanism. And then of course your slide is free to fully reciprocate. So with a pistol silencer, as you know, we're supposed to have our piston assembly, but let's remove that and let's just direct thread it so there's no movement whatsoever. And let's see what happens. Here we are firing our shot, and you can see a whole slide barrel assembly there is moving as a unit. The one thing you have to keep in mind is it's pushing back, but now instead of just pushing the slide and barrel, which were about a pound, now it's having to pull that back plus the entire weight of the silencer. Because of that, it's having to move a lot more weight. That slide is moving pretty slow and it doesn't even reach its rear of travel. It didn't even go back far enough to eject the casing that was fired, let alone load the next one. Lastly, we're gonna try it with a piston assembly, the way you're supposed to shoot a silencer on a handgun like this. Well, let's see if that fixes it. Fire. Let's 
So now that we've got our piston the way it's supposed to be, let's watch how this happens. Fires around, everything stays locked up the way it's supposed to. You can actually see the bullet leave the suppressor in that instance. Everything's still locked up. And most notably, you can see the piston extending out of the silencer. The silencer actually moves forward a little bit. I mean, all those explosive gases rushing through the silencer, hitting all the baffles, acts kind of like a, a wind on a sail. So it's actually kind of pulling the silencer forward. But more importantly, the booster is coming back, almost literally decoupling from the silencers. The silencer is kind of doing its own thing, for the most part staying in place. And meanwhile, instead of the barrel and that recoil operation having to move not just the slide and barrel, but also the silencer all at once from a dead stop, it's actually just compressing that spring. So it's really just having to manage its original weight plus a little bit of spring pressure, which is a lot less than trying to move the entire silencer with it. So if you're running your Octane or other silencer on a handgun and you do need the booster assembly because you have a delayed blowback mechanism where the barrel moves, but you want to run it on a fixed barrel, all you need to do is remove your piston spring and replace it with a fixed barrel spacer, which you can buy from our online store or your dealer. And that essentially just takes the place of a spring. So instead of having something that squishes and springs back, it's just a solid piece of material. So you just thread that into your silencer and you've got a fixed barrel. It's, this is one way you can do it. Uh, run that on your fixed barrel firearm. Um, another way to do it is just use a direct thread adapter. Accomplishes the same thing in a little bit simpler of a way, but either way works. Really the way of the future, so you don't have to have moving parts like a piston, would be something where the barrel is fixed and you have a delay elsewhere. Like our Maxim, the full integrally suppressed Maxim 9, as well as our prototype uh, non-NFA Maxim 9, they use the same delay blowback mechanism, which does not require the barrel to move, it stays fixed all the time. So that frees up internal volume taken up by the piston normally. Uh, it also just makes it simpler. You don't have moving parts. It's less prone to any sort of malfunction. Whew. That is quick. Nice thing, <laughs> not having a piston. Shooting that fast in particular with that high of a cyclic rate, um, I mean, your can would be slamming back and forth like crazy. That's a lot of extra movement. Keep uh, decoupling, coupling back together, pulling the can back into battery. So really the way of the future for suppressed handguns would be a fixed barrel. It's so much better just to eliminate moving parts. But, you know, we make silencers for what's out there. Um, hopefully we'll see more stuff like this in the future. Okay, so we just finished recording a whole bunch of high-speed video. Uh, not only does it look cool, but we can get some data from it. So now we're going to head upstairs to the computer and we're going to basically decompile that high speed video uh, using the tracking dots we put on it. And we're going to see uh, with a factory handgun, how fast is the slide supposed to be moving from the manufacturer? And then we're going to compare that to how fast the slide is moving when we put a silencer on it, uh, both with a direct thread, which is not a good idea. It keeps it from cycling. And then also with a piston, which enables it to cycle and just kind of see how all that stuff compares. Okay, so we've got all three of our shots graphed now on the same graph so we can compare them nice and easy. Uh, our first shot here was the unsuppressed Glock 19. That's this purple line here. You see it quickly accelerates to about 190 inches per second. You hit that unlocking lug, takes a little bit of energy out of it and kind of just staggers, levels off, and 150 inches per second when it reaches its rear of travel. Nice solid hit at the back means that it ejects the casing successfully, and then when the recoil spring starts doing its thing and pushing the slide back, it'll pick up enough momentum to pick up the next round out of the magazine, load it and chamber it. Everything works as it's supposed to. When we suppress the Glock without a booster and we just direct thread it on there, that's this green line, you just are adding all that weight to the barrel. The, the gun is just gonna feel like that silencer and that barrel are all just one solid piece of heavy stuff. So on the green line, we don't even accelerate even close to what it should. And you hit that locking lug and the energy just kind of dies. I mean, you can see this green line. I mean, it takes a heck of a lot longer and it didn't even reach its 
full length of travel. It just kind of goes back a bit, doesn't have enough energy to overcome the recoil springs, and it just pushes the slide back forward before it even ejects the casing. And then lastly, we have our suppressed shot with the piston like you should do, and that's this pink line here. So again, um, quick acceleration, hits that locking lug, takes a little bit of energy out of it. But then the interesting thing is it actually gets faster than the unsuppressed clock. You're actually getting acceleration. The reason for that is, I mean, you're shooting through a silencer. I mean, you're stopping gases, you're slowing the gases down for the sole purpose of allowing them to cool and dissipate before exiting the silencer. And slowing that down means the pressure is not dropping as fast as it would if it was just a bare muzzle. So that pressure's trying to go wherever it can, and that partially means it's pushing against the slide. So it's actually pushing the slide, making it go faster. Um, because of this accelerated speed, that's why a lot of uh, companies and people refer to these pistons as boosters, because you're actually boosting that speed. Let us know in the comments below if you'd like us to cover any other silencer science subjects you might be curious about. And I'm gonna go shoot some guns. <laughs>